Hello everyone! So it's the end of week two of Mermaid and this is what I have to show for myself. For day 10 of Mermaid I did a mantis shrimp mermaid. I was very excited for this one. I have never drawn a shrimp mermaid before. Come to think of it, I've never drawn a shrimp either, so I'm breaking new ground here. Since I based her on a very colorful peacock mantis shrimp, I wanted her to look really bright and bubbly to go along with those colors. I gave her these little space buns to represent the mantis shrimp's big ol' round eyes, and I kept those little leggies in there, trying to make them as least terrifying as I possibly could. I don't know why, but shrimp legs and lobster legs freak me out. I think these turned out pretty cute though, and not creepy at all. I'm not gonna lie, when I put down the base colors, I thought my eyes were going to bleed, it was so bright. But once I started shading and everything and adding the detail, it all came together and it looked just like I hoped it would. Even though my mermaid is adorable and looks completely harmless, mantis shrimp are terrifying creatures in real life and just, whew, I was reading some random facts about them and I'm scared. For day 11, we have a cuttlefish mermaid. I was so confused as to where to take this design at first. I wanted to show the elongated body and the little ribbon-like fin that the cuttlefish have around their bodies, and also incorporate the tentacles. At first I was going to leave out the tentacles, but it just didn't look right, and then I had to figure out where to put them. I thought about giving her multiple arms, and that then I decided that might be nightmare fuel, so I decided against that and finally chose to add them right here at her waist. And since cuttlefish tend to be quite timid, I was going for this kind of shy, introspective kind of character for her. And as for her color scheme, though I could have technically done any color I wanted since cuttlefish can change their color and skin texture to blend in with their surroundings, I kept the colors very pastel because she looks like a pastel little marshmallow. So cute. For day 12, we have a green moray eel merman. I started off drawing a mermaid, but then changed my mind about the time I started on the face and made a merman instead. And it really showed me something about how I've been drawing male faces up to this point. I don't think that I am guilty of having the same face syndrome, or at least I try not to fall into that, but I definitely use the same kind of tricks to make a male face differ from a female face. I use pretty much the exact same features and I just make the nose bigger, mouth wider, eyebrows lower, and that's it. My female faces don't often have makeup or long pronounced eyelashes, so it's not even like I have to change up the eyes at all. I don't know if this is a pro tip or an admission of guilt. You can decide. For day 13, we have a wrasse. I had a hard time deciding which wrasse to base this guy on. There are like 500 different species of wrasse and I had a lot to choose from. After searching through Google Photos for hours, I finally decided to go with a purple lined fairy wrasse for the coloring and design. Wrasse do tend to vary quite a bit in their coloring and patterning based on their habitat and a bunch of other factors, so I pretty much took artistic liberties with the coloring, but I do that most of the time, so that's nothing new. Like I said in my last video, I have trouble drawing men's hairstyles, so this was no exception. I looked up some references to figure out what I wanted, and I actually learned that this hairstyle is called a fade. At least I think that's what it's called. See, maybe that's why I have trouble figuring out what to do with hairstyles. I don't know the names of any hairstyles, so I don't know what to look up. For day 14, we have a jellyfish mermaid. I love drawing jellyfish, so I was pretty pumped for this one, but I found out it was a little bit harder than I thought it was going to be. First, I could not figure out where to put her hands and what expression to give them. I think hands go a really long way into making a character's overall expression work. I mean, if you think about it, most people emote with their hands as much as with their faces, so it kind of makes sense. There's an expression that my mom uses for people who talk with their hands a lot. She says if you tied their hands down, they couldn't say a word, or something like that. So I've always tried to work really hard to make my hands as fluid and expressive as I possibly could, even though I was crap at drawing hands for the longest time. 
I also had a hard time figuring out what color scheme I should go with. There were a lot of options and most of them were very pale and transparent. So I had to find something that would make her stand out on the white background if I was going to use her for a sticker design, which is the plan. I finally decided to base her colors on the compass jellyfish, which apparently is a rare jellyfish and I didn't know that. I learn a lot from doing these art challenges. Day 15, I did a clownfish mermaid. I really love how this one turned out. I mean, I like how all of them turned out, but this one was just really fun. Clownfish should be on that top 10 list of cutest sea creatures. And back in 2018 when I did this same challenge, the clownfish mermaid was my favorite. I definitely went in a different direction with the design this time though. The previous clownfish mermaid was timid and this year's clownfish mermaid looks very outgoing. I went for a really dynamic pose and though I'm not sure that I executed it quite correctly, I definitely feel like I got a sense of movement in there. I wouldn't say that orange is one of my favorite colors, but I do tend to have a lot of orange in my life and I like a lot of orange things. Clownfish, my car, foxes, so maybe I need to reevaluate my favorite colors. So for day 16 and today's mermaid, we have a Plecostomus mermaid, or Pleco for short. Okay, so I had fun with this one. This is another type of fish that my family used to have in our 50 gallon aquarium when I was young. I wanted to go with something funny and I wasn't too concerned about her not really fitting in with the aesthetic of the rest of the mermaids because I just had this idea in my head to have the mermaid's face smushed against the glass. If you've ever seen a Pocostomus clean a fish tank, then you know the funny image I had in my head. They kind of smush themselves against the glass and scrape the algae off kind of like So I wanted to go with something like that, but cuter. It was a little challenging trying to find out how to go about making this look. I had to figure out how to make her face look smushed and not make it look like she always looked that derpy. I added this blue shading in where her skin was in contact with the glass, though I ended up having to tweak it just a little bit at the end to make it look right. I also made her a little cross-eyed because if you were looking at algae up that close to your face, you'd be cross-eyed too. So that's it for this week's Mermaid Mermaids. What do you think? Are there any sea creatures you want to see turned into mermaids? Let me know in the comments. If you liked the video and want to see more, like and subscribe. Don't want to wait a week to see the next mermaids? Check out my other social media, the links are in the description, where I post every day. As always, have a great day. Bye.